Hello everyone and welcome back to Lewis Fiction and another episode of my animated Spider-Man series. If you have not watched the rest of the series, make sure to go watch that before you watch this episode. This is episode 6, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. We kick off this episode with news coverage of the events of the previous episode. However, it's all in favour of Norman. Norman is winning the election because everyone is backing him after his attack. Norman has created a false sense of empathy with the citizens of New York City, thus giving him the upper hand over Wilson Fisk. Norman is the first person ever to get the upper hand over Fisk, and with Fisk's reign and power over New York being put under threat, he needs to enact a bigger and better plan to take down Osborne. Thus, Fisk will form the first iteration of the Sinister Six. This episode, I want to do something a little different. Every version of the Sinister Six in every adaptation of Spider-Man and even the original comics mainly are formed to take down Spider-Man. It's usually a task force of all of Spider-Man's greatest enemies that all have one common goal. But I think that's a bit simple. What if the Sinister Six weren't tasked with taking out Spider-Man, but were tasked with something different? Wilson Fisk will assemble a few villains from previous episodes to form the first iteration of the Sinister Six to take out Norman Osborn and take down Oscorp, but it needs to be swift and precise. The Sinister Six will consist of Shocker, Tombstone, Hypno Hustler, and Vulture from the villains that we have met previously. The new additions will be Boomerang and Chameleon. Chameleon will be revealed to have been a villain that had previously been put away by Spider-Man in his early career, referencing how Chameleon was Spider-Man's first ever villain from the comic books. And Boomerang will be another D-list villain recruited from the bar with no name. However, on the Peter and Carly side of things, Carly will have woken up, and Peter will wake up just 30 minutes later, still on the same couch that they found themselves in on the last episode. Peter apologizes for falling asleep on her couch, and she says it's fine. They were hard at work last night. She offers him breakfast, and Peter gladly accepts. We get a few slow scenes with them together throughout this episode, them just doing normal things together. They eat breakfast, go to work, etc. However, Carly seems slightly off with Peter. This catches Peter's attention, as they have been getting along really well lately. This carries on until it all boils over after Peter tries to kiss her, as the last few episodes have really shown us how well their chemistry is together and how well they are when they're with each other. But she avoids him. Peter is really confused by this point. At this point in the story, this episode will explore more of Carly's backstory. She will tell Peter that the reason that she's been off with him is because she's afraid of getting too close to him. It will be revealed that Carly once had a boyfriend that she loved very dearly, who unfortunately passed away during a battle that Spider-Man had with a villain a few years ago. Peter gulps at this, realizing the severity of the situation. Carly will mention how she doesn't blame Spider-Man though. She knew that he was just trying to do the right thing. She's always admired how he helps people of his own goodwill, but the death of her boyfriend would have broken her. Carly will tell him the reason that she does this job, the reason that she puts herself in all these dangerous situations is to feel the thrill of something again. Because after her boyfriend died, she didn't feel anything at all. She felt numb for months on end, until Robbie offered her this job at Frontline. She will tell Peter that that's all she's been doing to numb the pain, until he came along. She will tell Peter not to beat around the bush and admit that they've both felt a connection. Peter will admit to her too that he has. She will say that the connection between them has made her feel something that she hasn't felt in a very long time. Companionship, even friendship in a way. It makes her not want to do this reporting job anymore because she's starting to value what she has with Peter more. Peter will ask why she won't let it go any further, and Carly will say that because she's afraid of becoming numb again. What if she loses Peter, like she lost her last love? And thus, both Peter and Carly's stories parallel each other. Both Carly and Peter both lost their lovers because of Spider-Man. Carly lost us physically in a battle Spider-Man had with a villain, and Peter lost Mary Jane because of the mental strain Spider-Man had on their relationship. Once again, this will isolate the two entities of Peter Parker, showcasing that no matter how good life can get, he will always be haunted by the good he does as Spider-Man. Although Carly will be reluctant at first, this episode will specifically be targeted at Peter trying to break through to Carly to try and get her to open up again. Meanwhile, on the Fisk side of things, he launches the attack on Oscorp Tower. The villains storm the building. Whilst Peter is out taking photos for Frontline, he gets word of this. He rushes to the scene to see the Sinister Six storming Oscorp. As I mentioned over the last couple of episodes, Peter has learned different skills as Spider-Man to represent his strength and development as a character. Thus, during this episode, Peter will have to implement all the skills that he has learned thus far. He'll be saving civilians, fighting villains in the air, and trying to defeat them one by one, each with varying levels of strength. Norman will be on the run. 
Once word catches to the media that this is going down, Carly ends up arriving on the scene along with some reporters from Frontline. Carly sees Spider-Man fighting in the tower and is about to call Peter to come get some pictures before she decides against it. Meanwhile, Spider-Man will try and take the villains all out at once, but one thing he hasn't learned throughout this first season is how to take on multiple villains at once. Thus, Spider-Man is down. For the first time, Spider-Man can't get back up. Vulture will hold Spider-Man up by his throat and say that he won't fail the Kingpin this time. Spider-Man will stay out of their way. But in the nick of time before Vulture could snap Spider-Man's neck, Norman Osborn comes to his aid, blasting Vulture with a high-tech ray gun developed by Oscorp Industries. Working together, Norman and Spider-Man will use their combined intelligence to beat the villains and will quickly become aware of each other's intellectual prowess. After all is said and done, Norman will say that they make a great team, and Spider-Man will warm up to Norman, agreeing with him. Norman will say that whoever is under that mask has a bright future. Norman Osborn is safe for now, and has gained a level of respect for Spider-Man, possibly hinting at a future relationship between the two. Spider-Man will swing off into the sunset, as the police take the villains back to Riker's Island. Fisk is also furious, but the battle isn't over yet. And we will end the episode with Carly and Peter, and featuring some scenes between the two. After a deep talk with them two hashing everything out, they decide that maybe they are good for one another. Peter will think to himself that when the Sinister Six had him down, all he could think about was Carly. They will kiss as the episode brings itself to a close. That is it for episode 6 of my Spider-Man animated series. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. This was kind of like a mid-season finale sort of thing where a bunch of the plot lines kind of wrapped themselves up and we're ready to go for the next part of season 1. If you are excited for that, make sure you stay subscribed and make sure you like this video and also comment down below as well. Share the video if you can as well. It really, really helps out the channel and I'd really appreciate that. Once again, thank you all for watching and the continued support on all of these videos. I really do appreciate every single one of you thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video specifically on sunday for another episode of spectacular spider-man and the season finale to season four i'll see you then take care and peace